what should I say on this blog? So... Hello, my name is Alfredo and this is Off The Strip. I introduce you to places just minutes off the Las Vegas Strip or take you on one of my adventures. If this is your first time to my channel, please hit that subscribe button and that notification bell. More information is listed below. It is our first full, second day, but first full day in Budapest. <clears throat> we had so much fun last night. We had dinner, tried goulash for the first time. Delicious. Um, let's see, what else? Oh, went to the ruined bars. And then just found a random bar on a corner street. Had some nightcaps and had a great time. Um, so far, loving Budapest. So join me on today's tour where we are doing a city walking tour and whatever else we can find. All right, so we've made it to, I don't even know what it's called. It's a giant public market. Um, this building right here. So it's supposed to be kind of neat, lots of shops, food, shopping, let's check it out. Opened in 1897, the Central Market is the largest and oldest indoor market in Budapest. It's located on the Pest side of Budapest. Built in a neo-Gothic style, the Central Market is where locals and tourists go for a variety of food stalls from fresh vegetables, meats, wine, and souvenirs. So if you're looking to bring home authentic Hungarian paprika, this is the place to go. Right now we're just walking around looking for coffee or some sort of breakfast. Um, kind of cool place, kind of like the one in Florence, Italy, but this one is a lot cleaner. Um, definitely less crowded, but it might be because it's so early in the morning. So I'm having a sweet mangoes. It's got strawberries, honey, almond, vanilla cream. It's really, really good. It's a really sweet breakfast. It's like fried dough with all these toppings. After breakfast, we walked all the way across town to meet the rest of our tour group in front of St. Stephen's Basilica. So here we are in front of St. Stephen's Basilica where we are about to meet the rest of our tour group. So let's go check it out. A Roman Catholic church, St. Stephen was named after the first king of Hungary. The guy holding the red umbrella is Robert. He was our walking tour guide that took us on a three hour walking tour of the city. He gave us a lot of suggestions from the point of view of a local. Hi. Uncle Carl, rub his belly for good luck. Now use hand sanitizer. We are at Freedom Square in front of a very controversial statue. The eagle representing Germany Nazi and the Archangel of uh, Budapest. Um, as you can see, the chain link um, right in front of it. Um, protesting this controversial statue, but long history. Hey, have you clicked that like button yet? Click it now. A statue of President Ronald Reagan walking from the Hungarian parliament behind him to the U.S. Embassy. Opened in 1904, the Hungarian parliament is the seat of the National Assembly of Hungary. So here we are at the Hungarian parliament. We tried to get tickets, but they're sold out. We're going to try to do a walk, walk in. But, um, it's impressive. Did you know about 100,000 people were involved in the construction of the parliament? They used 40 million bricks, about half a million precious stones, and 88 pounds of 22 and 23 karat gold. 
So I've taken siege of the red umbrella. I'm now the leader of this tour. See everyone's following me. I'm the best tour guide in Budapest, rated by Rob. But what we really want to talk about right now is 1945. So since 1945 in January, by this time Hitler has been past his paranoia. Uh, you know, he could feel the Allies kind of closing in, his reach of power is just slowly closing, closing in. And this is when he starts kind of sending out the order, so to speak, to start emptying out the concentration camps, start emptying out the cities of these undesirables, so to speak, right? So, so if you can imagine being woken out of your beds by, you know, 2 a.m. by some soldiers, uh, some Hungar Hungarian soldiers, they tell you to kind of gather your belongings, any valuables especially that you may have left. They then usher you to this part of, a ri of the river. Now, then you are told to stand in line here. Uh, you are told to take off your shoes, to put any valuables you have inside these shoes, and then you are tied together hand in hand with the shoelaces taken out of your shoes. And if you were lucky, uh, you were shot. Uh, see, during this time, the army was going through an ammunition shortage, so they wouldn't waste a bullet on every single person. Only every third or fourth person was shot. Their weight would carry those still living onto the rocks below into the water. You'd rake your backs, your necks, your legs, and the person with the big stick would push you into the river, and the river would carry you far away from here to remove any evidence of you ever having existed. See, it is estimated that just between January and March, before the Soviets had finally shown up, about 20,000 people were executed right here. Uh, but of course, this number is not really known. It's kind of a rough estimate. We don't really know. The whole point of these executions was to erase people from the history books. We don't know. What we do know is that this part of the river is, is referred to as the Red Danube for this reason, and that there are 60 pairs of shoes here today. Uh, this monument was erected in 2005 to commemorate the 60 years, hence the 60 shoes. So So who was Sei Cheney? Sei Cheney was our greatest philanthropist. He is the one that commissioned the Chambridge. The Chambridge is very important to the history of Budapest. It is thanks to the Chambridge that the two cities had finally united. Buda and Pest were different cities entirely before that. In 1873, the two cities united. And originally, it was supposed to be called Pest Buda because most of the people had lived on this side of the river. But of course, Buda side having the more influential people uh, usually get the deciding vote and they decided on Buda Pest, thank God. So after taking a long walking tour, it was definitely time to grab lunch and cool off. We also needed to book our river cruise that Robert suggested on our walking tour. So one of my favorite things to do when I travel is go into a, a Starbucks because I collect the Starbucks mugs and there's pretty much a Starbucks almost everywhere, not in Italy, but definitely a McDonald's everywhere. So I, I'm not eating here, but I did want to see what was different. They have, I don't know if you can see, uh, right where my finger is right now. It's a hamburger with fried shrimp. Well, the really cute European restaurant over there had no space for us. So we're gonna be obnoxious Americans and have a cocktail at the Hard Rock Budapest. So we had a lot of walking to do today. Um, we're tired. We are taking a break at the Hard Rock because we're Americans. <laughs> and, but really because Anna Cafe down the street, they didn't have any patio seating except for sitting in the sun and it's too hot for that. So we're just gonna kill time here until our cruise on the Danube tonight. a river cruise on the Danube River. <sighs> You've booked it over here. So tired. Having a pain 
pina colada on the Danube River. So behind me is the Cheney Bridge. It's under construction. It's supposed to be opening sometimes this summer, as they say. But we are unable to cross it this trip. So here we are cruising by the Hungarian Parliament. It's actually, the Parliament actually doesn't meet there anymore. They moved elsewhere. This building is currently, I wouldn't say not officially used. It's used only for official um, events and dignitary visits from other countries. But otherwise, it's pretty much a, an unused building except for uh, tourist tours inside. And just on the other side of those buildings was our hotel. And every day we cross this bridge by foot, the Elizabeth Bridge, to meet up with the rest of the crew on the Pest side. After a long day of walking around the city and a nice relaxing river cruise, it was finally time for dinner. We found this restaurant where I seriously had the best meal while in Budapest. Your main course is already. So we just ended our second night uh, in Budapest and wow, it's been a, another great night. Um, good dinner, great walking tour, got to see a bunch of stuff, um, look at this moon right now, um, it's just beautiful, with the Buddha castle right there, um, yeah, so another great day in Budapest, so thank you so much, uh, we'll catch you in the next episode.